Think about it for a moment before you put pen to paper. Okay. Uh, what's that prefix at the front of Z mean again? That's the argument, right? So when I say arg z equals 2 pi on 3, what I mean is, tell me, tell me, draw all of the complex numbers whose argument is that number there, 2 pi on 3. Now, just to help you remember, we're in radians, right? So the most famous number when you're dealing with radians is pi radians, right? I'm sorry, I should count for you. Pi radians, and that takes you to in degrees, that's, that's a 180, that's a straight angle, okay? So 2 pi on 3, what's that in degrees? 120. It's 120 degrees. So you've got a picture in your mind. Remember when you're on the, um, on the Argan diagram and when you're measuring with quadrants, you start from the positive real axis. That's over here. Come on, hijack this diagram since it's already here. You begin over here, right? And then you start to measure your 120 degrees, your 2 pi on 3, okay? So it's going to come around all the way over that way. How far is it going to go? 120. Something like this, is it not? Yeah. That'll be 90 in there, and there's your 30. Okay, does that make sense? Okay. Now, when I go ahead and draw this, therefore, I'm going to draw over here now. As you can see, looks like I'm only going to need the one second quadrant over there, so you can draw that part. You can see that if I were to, say, put you on any one of these spots, right? Like put you here, or here, or here, or anywhere else on there. The arguments of all of those complex numbers will all be 2 pi on 3. Do you agree with that? Except for one. What happens here at the origin? What's your argument at the origin? Hmm. Now, tell me again, what does argument mean? What does argument mean? I, I drew it on the board. Just the it's the direction you have to face in, right? Measuring from here. This is the positive real axis. That's where we begin, and then you turn. Okay. Now, if you're measuring to be there, right? You're measuring from there. So, what angle can you measure? Is it zero? Is it pi? Is it two pi? Is it? Well, you know what? You're kind of any of those angles, right? Now, this is kind of a dilemma for us because, it's like, well, I need to be able to say what my argument is in an unambiguous way. Okay. The only unambiguous thing you could say, right, is that if you could justly say any number there, then you can't say any of those numbers is better than the rest. So none of the values can be said as the argument. So in fact, there is no argument at the origin, okay? So that's why I have a hollow circle there indicating that every part of this whole line, and I'm gonna complete this. What's this angle again? 30 degrees, which is pi on 6. There's our real axis. There's our imaginary axis. Everywhere along that, by the way, it's not an interval because that's fixed at both ends. It's not a line because that goes on forever. Forever. What's this called? Does anyone know? It starts with an R. It's a ray. So everywhere along this ray satisfies this equation. All the arguments, any way you like. They're all 2 pi on 3, except for the origin. Okay, does that make sense? Now this is a case where, well yeah, you can't really do this algebraically at all, right? I'm not smartly. So you just think about the geometry. So would that line go on forever? Hmm. Or would that ray go on forever? Yeah, it would, the ray would go on forever. Because no matter how far away you are, remember uh, a complex number is magnitude and direction, a vector is magnitude and direction. <laughs> this doesn't say anything about magnitude. Your magnitude could be anything you like. So everywhere on there is fair okay, game. Make so sense? Why is it a ray? It goes on forever in that direction, but it doesn't go on forever in this direction. So um, it's a ray is halfway between a line and an interval, which has not two fixed ends or no fixed ends, but one. Okay. Well, have a look at this, right? Now, one of the tricky things in the entire extension two course, and extension one is like this too when you get to some of the harder areas, is that sometimes questions are just trying to intimidate you into not trying them because they look awful. Like, Mathematicians love very concise language, but as a result, you're like, what on earth does that mean? But the first law, well, the third example, is really quite easy. Think about it, right? This Z, this Z, I'm just going to replace. Here's just a general technique you can use. I can always replace that with F plus IY. I haven't violated the number. I've just written it in a different way, okay? So if I write the imaginary part, this is number three, of that, but this time I'm going to write X plus y, IY instead of the Z, okay? is x plus iy, what have I got? Minus 1, 
plus 3i. Apparently that's 4. Okay. Now, when I have a look at this, if all I need to do is remember, well, which is the imaginary part and which is the real part, okay? You can see, here we go, this number here is real. Now, by definition, it's real, okay? There's other real stuff that's going on in this whole complex number. What else is real? Minus one. The, the minus one is also real, okay? So that leaves you with uh, these two terms. These two terms, okay? They are the imaginary components. Well, the imaginary part, the imaginary part of this, is just the numbers without the i's, right? So there's a y there, and then there's a plus three there. That's just equal to four, right? So you're like, oh, what is that here? Okay, this is the imaginary part of this. So of course that just means it's that, right? So I know how to draw that. Wow, hooray everyone. I can do extension too. Okay, wait, let's fix that. There we go, now I can do extension too. Okay, so this, it looks intimidating, right? Uh, this one looks intimidating too. You're gonna have to do some multiplication of complex numbers here. But you know how to do that? Arithmetic was the easy bit, right? So have a go at those. I'll give you another minute or two, and then I'll show you four and five together. 